So welcome everybody. We are going to have uh, the next one and a half hours or so, or maybe one hour is one hour and ten minutes or so, on taking a look at the overview of UHV one in the student induction program, and talk about a few things. What is the student induction program? Uh, you must have gone through that in the introductory workshop. The UHV-1 module, I will describe that and also how to conduct it because you are going to be conducting that UHV-1 module. And the resources that we have for you to prepare yourself and to conduct the UHV-1 module. So these are the things that we will cover in this session. The student induction program is basically for us to help the students for a smooth transition from their present environment from school or the preparation coaching environment to higher education. So that is the purpose of the induction program. So they are initially going to spend some time in this program. 21 days is the expected time to be spent on induction. And then they would be spending four years or so in the college. So the activities that start during the induction program will be continued through the student activity cell through various clubs during the four years. So the student induction program is the first 21 days. These are the goals for the student induction program. To become familiar with the ethos and culture of the new surroundings of the higher education institute that they have come to. To express their relationship, to develop bonds with their peers, seniors, faculty, staff, and so on. So to develop their relationship. To provide an exposure to a holistic vision of life. So this development of this holistic vision is the important thing uh, that is reinforced in the student induction program. Right now, many of the students would be thinking that life is mostly about me and my workplace. But if they are able to see things that they are connected to, dependent on and influence not only themselves, but their family, the society, the nation, and the entire nature, the entire world, then they will make decisions which are based more holistically. So that is the idea of the induction program and particularly the UHV portion of it. Another objective is to develop a healthy lifestyle and ethical professional discipline. So whatever they understand, whatever they are able to practice, that is what will stay with them for a long time. So if they can develop a healthy lifestyle, that would be a nice thing. To connect and appreciate the diversity of cultures, that is another very important thing. They will be meeting people perhaps for the first time from other parts of the country or other countries. So they should be able to see that there is diversity and there is universe, unity in that diversity. People are not very different inside. Outside they may look different, but they are inside the same. And also to overcome some weaknesses they may have in their skill levels so that they can be ready for the higher 
education part. So they may need some help in some subjects like mathematics. We are taking a universal approach to uh, this induction program and education in general. So these modules have been designed and based on generic and universal principles. And the examples that are taken are taken from the local, regional, national, and international, uh, internationally available material so that they can relate it to their day-to-day -day life and take inspiration from that. So in this way, it will help in connecting the basic principles through specific examples. It will help the students to see and appreciate various cultures, see the commonality amongst them. In the goals, there is commonality. In the effort, there is a lot of commonality. So like that, they will be able to see the commonality. It will help to evaluate any specific example, system or culture. And they will have a view to fill the gap if there is any, rather than to criticize or reject it. To say that I am special, my culture is special, everybody else is not, etc. So they will help to bridge the gaps rather than to criticize or reject it. And they'll be able to see that we can be mutually enriching for other cultures, for other people, for other students. So that is the approach that we are taking in this. And we can see that today, the whole world has become a mixture of various cultures. So you have so many different, different people coming from different backgrounds, different cultures different ways of thinking, different mindsets. And today one problem is that we want to be special. And we think that our culture is special and the others are not. So like that, there is a lot of opposition. So it is important that we are able to appreciate the differences, appreciate the different approaches, appreciate the different achievements draw on their strengths and try to bridge the gaps. That is to be complementary. So that is the kind of approach that is being taken in the SIP. And there are these nine modules broadly in three categories. One is the universal human values category. The second is the examples, particularly taken from the Indian knowledge system, but it includes local, regional, national, and international examples, which are focused on the well being of all. And the third category are skills. And we are only starting this exploration in the SIP. And we hope that it will continue to be human-friendly and nature-friendly skills as the education progresses. So these are the modules. And today we are going to talk about the module one, that is Universal Human Values one. So we are going to take this kind of approach that through this UHV, exploration, you must have been able to see that we are similar to each other. And as far as you and the students are concerned, the, you have a relationship of mutual fulfillment, of mutual development, that every student has this possibility in them, just like you have the possibility to reach to your full potential as a human being. The student also has the same possibility. And for this, realizing this possibility, we have to understand. And we have to understand these two things. 
one is what is so we have to understand ourselves other people the whole nature around us the whole existence and the second thing to understand is what is our relationship with all these things that we live with so what is our relationship with ourselves what is our relationship with the family other things around us a relationship means what is our role in it what is our participation third point here is that it is possible to understand and you have been going through the uhv2 right now and you would be uh, very clear about this it is possible to understand it is possible to understand and it is enriching so this possibility is there with every student it is this uh, possibility is there and the uh, method to understand which we are using is the self exploration method so it is possible for everybody because they are curious every human being is curious that potential to understand and the need to understand is innate in every human being and you must have also seen that the syllabus for this understanding uh, you can say is also something which is quite definite so you have to only understand a few things and on the basis of that uh, we can decide things and live harmoniously and we have been using this process of self exploration so that we are able to see things directly rather than giving sort of stereotyped or you know ready made answers the whole effort is to help to find the answers within to explore and to discover the answers that are within every one of us so that is the whole idea of the uhv module any module and particularly for the first module so we will try to discover our aspirations and articulate our concerns in uhv1 and we will see slowly we will realize that we have the same basic aspirations and we have to understand to fulfill our aspirations just assuming something is not going to be sufficient and similarly for our concerns we have to understand to resolve our concerns our problems so this is one possible outcome from uh, uhb1 the process to understand is also very simple to pay attention and in this uhb module we will go over this process of understanding at these four levels like in any other module we are going through all the expanse of our being from individual to the whole existence now for the uhv1 module we have made these observations about the objectives number 1 they should be able to see that they need to develop a holistic perspective of life they need to think about not only themselves and their workplace but about other things so point number 2 is that the student should be sensitized about not only themselves but also the family the society the nature and existence the third thing is that most of the students would already be doing some kind of self reflection asking questions is a indicator of that so they must be self reflecting so this idea is to strengthen that self reflection to give it a sort of a direction 
so that it can become uh, more pronounced faster and reach to its uh, possibility. The fourth point is that once they are able to see things more clearly, it will develop more self-confidence. It will also develop commitment to go further to understand things and to implement them through their skills, to act accordingly, to live by it. So those are the objectives of UHV1. But the main objective here is to see the need for developing this holistic world vision. So that is uh, the objective of UHV1. All right, so if there are any questions so far, I can take some questions before we move on. Yeah. I'll lower all the hands. Okay, Sunita ji has raised her hand. And yeah. Good morning, Bhaiya. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Sunita ji. Thanks for all the sessions, Bhaiya. It's very interesting. I just have one doubt, Bhaiya, actually. One of my um, uh, tenant who is staying, she is a uh, BSc completed hai, BEDB completed hai. So, but she's not working anywhere. How can she attend this particular program, Bhaiya? Yeah, see, let's focus our questions on what is being discussed. Done, Bhaiya. These kind of questions are relevant questions. But if we spend time on these questions, then we may not be able to complete uh, yes, what is to be discussed. Done, done. But she is welcome to attend. Okay. You just let us know and uh, she can attend. Okay. There are the program is open to everyone. Okay. Depending on how many places are there. Like right now, I see that there are 988 participants and 201 panelists. So there are a lot of us are interested. So if there is place, we are always going to welcome. Okay. Yes, yeah. Bhaiya. But I doubt hai, Bhaiya, ki we are organizing, keeping these things in the level and the program. Agree? Yeah, let's go back to this, you know, what has been discussed so far. So I'll go to Do Dr. Uh, uh, Sham Narish. I'm sorry, I'm not pronouncing your name correctly, but yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, then we have Dr. N.V. Surya Narayan. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, sir. Uh, very happy that the sessions are all going well. Just I have a small note, sir. Yeah. So generally in our classes, there will be some two to three students who don't want to learn anything and just they want to disturb the class only. So sending them out of the class is not a solution. But even after repeated counseling, mentoring, even after calling parents, they're not unable to get change in their behavior. Do you suggest any thing to, so that they can be brought into the class again? Yeah, surely. You have to think about these two possibilities mm -hmm. that either they are not able to understand mm -hmm. or we are not able, we have the opportunity to help them, but we don't have the capacity to do that. Mm -hmm. Both of these are possibilities. So find out what it is. And the one that you can work on more is your own capacity to make a difference. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. We have you. to develop ourselves mm -hmm. so that we can be more helpful. Okay, sir. Obviously, if they are not able to see the re relevance mm -hmm. of what we are talking, mm -hmm. not only in this subject, but mm -hmm. overall education, they will not be interested. Mm -hmm. not, in, not in a single class, in all class. Their intention is only to disturb the class. They don't want to study. No, no, that you are assuming their intention. Their intention is to be happy. Mm -hmm. They have figured out that this is a program for happiness. Yes. For their happiness. So this program is not a very harmonious program. That is okay. Mm -hmm. But we are not able to show them that there is a harmonious program for happiness. Yes, sir. 
So that is our problem. We had an opportunity to talk to them over so many years when they were in school, when they were, you know, now they have come to college. So we means not only you personally, but mm. the parents, yes, the school teachers and all. Hello. Yes, we are yes. able to make the education relevant to their life. Mm. How, will, how do you think they will be interested? So, yes, sir. For example, you are a professor of some subject. Yes, sir. Mm. Right. What is your subject? Mathematics, sir. Yeah, mathematics. How much of your free time at home do you have discussions about mathematics in your home? Yes, sir. Uh, preparing material, preparing videos. Yeah, other, other than, you know, related to that workplace. Mm. What is your core interest in mathematics? You can find out. You know. Yes, sir. Mm. You have a mathematics lab at home. Mm. You invite people for all that. So you can see if it is related to your life, mm. you will do something. If it is not related to your life, mm. you won't do anything. And similarly, so, the students also. Mm. Unless they are able to see that their education is going to help them in their life. How will, you, yes. how will they pay attention? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. True. We have to work on ourselves for that. Mm. Hello. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, so now uh, we'll go to the next part. We have... Hello, hello. Yeah, I'm sorry, we'll not be able to take your question right now. Mm. We'll uh, go to the next part because of the available time. <laughs> okay. We'll try to do it in the uh, uh, next part of it. So now we are going to talk about how to conduct this UHV one. Okay. There are 15 sessions of one to one and a half hours each. So minimum of one hour is required for you to interact. And that too with your own preparation if you have done homework. So we can find out for this particular workshop, when you came, how many of you have gone through the UHV1 presentation, downloaded them and seen them? So you can, you have to do the homework for uh, conducting this. And this is all a part of this workshop also. So in your homework, you could look at all the presentations and have very specific questions about it. That would be very useful, isn't it? So <clears throat> when you go to conduct these programs, I mean the UHV1 program, then there are these very specific general guidelines. Try to conduct these sessions in face-to-face -face mode in small groups of 20 students. Only if it is not possible, then you go for larger groups or shorter sessions or online mode. But try to do it in this mode. This is number one. Second thing is to ensure that the guidelines are followed. Guidelines for any uh, workshop on human values has these four basic guidelines that whatever we discuss is universal, it is rational. The student should be able to ask questions and he should be able to discuss the answers. They should be able to try to verify it for their own, on their own right. And whatever solution is there, it should lead to harmony and not to disharmony. So it's not just a matter of memorizing things, but it has to lead to harmony in living. So those are the general guidelines for any uh, uh, workshop on human values. <laughs> Keep the discussion live, natural and interactive and not instructive, artificial kind of uh, discussion, not a lecture. 
So keep it as live as possible. The online method has a great limitation in terms of both time and volume. Like right now, there are 1,200 uh, participants in this uh, in this workshop, and I myself cannot keep it live and interactive right now. But if you are able to do it live and interactive, please try to do that. That would be better. Then propose and encourage exploration and not give sort of ready-made solutions. Don't ask them to memorize things. Don't give the, you can say, answer. Uh, they should be able to explore it in themselves and find the answer rather than you giving some ready-made answer. Have continuity from one session to another session. It should not be sort of uh, independent, unconnected sessions taken by different, different people and not connected to each other. You may have different people taking the sessions, but at least the session content should be connected to each other. You have to do your homework very well. And not just because you have to do the session, but because it is something which is mutually enriching. It is enriching for you and your family first. And then it may be enriching for the students. So this first part is very important. That is what I mean by prepare well. And if you find that something can be improved, in your presentation, in the presentation for others, note it down. And you can share your suggestions for refinement. Okay. All these are general guidelines for any workshop. And we are focusing on the understanding part and not just the thinking or doing part. In fact, we are not really focusing on the uh, anything else other than understanding, because the thinking and doing will follow that understanding. It is based on that. So this is very important that we focus. Even if we are talking about doing, we keep connecting it up to thinking and understanding, and ultimately to understanding. So this UHV-1 has these 15 uh, topics, 15 sessions, and the sessions are listed over here. What I want to point out here is that these sessions are about a certain uh, part of the student's life, which has to do with their aspirations, or the concerns or issues that they have, problems that they have in their life. And on the right hand side are the basic underlying realities, the underlying harmony. So if they understand that, then they will be able to address their aspirations and issues. Can you see that? That, for example, We can manage our health if we are able to understand human being as the coexistence of self and body. You must have just gone through that session also. Isn't it? So at this point, I'll again pause for any questions. I'll lower all the hands and uh, if you have any questions pertaining to this point, then we'll uh, take that. Yeah, Sabitesh ji, Dr. Sabitesh. Oh, wait a minute. 
for your input. Okay. Dr. Savitesh, you are not connecting, so I'm passing the mic to uh, Namaste, Bhaiya. Uh, namaste, Namaste. The, uh, when we uh, directly related or uh, involved with the students, so we come across such a situations called uh, their personal uh, issues, which is related with the family or uh, the substances related to their uh, like uh, financial issues. Uh, how to address those such type of uh, situations? Even though we are trying to motivate or even though we are trying to uh, give some uh, inputs to overcome those uh, hurdles, but even then, because it is not up to, means we can't imagine as per them, we can guide them only. It is up to the student uh, capacity to come out of that situation. So how to make them to reach that level? Uh, that's very important. Good question. See, they are describing a problem at this level of doing. Okay. Yes. okay. And we are giving them point answer, do this, don't do that. Yeah, exactly. Try this, don't try that. And this is my proposal, you do it like this. Okay. You know, go and have dialogue with your parents, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. We are telling them about this doing part. Isn't it? Yes. And that doing part will be acceptable or not acceptable to the student based on whatever their thinking is. Mm -hmm. And that is going to be very specific to that that particular situation. Yes. And we can't do that for every student. By any means, we cannot do it for everybody. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? So ultimately, we have to connect it up to some understanding, some part that is uh, lacking in their understanding. Mm -hmm. And if that understanding is there, then they will be able to fix their doing anyway. So instead of trying to fix the, or uh, you know, giving fish, you have to teach them how to fish kind of thing. Means it, it is possible only with a one to one face to face interaction only. Even though we are having a large gathering, we no, can no, we no, have we no, need no, to no, modulate no. them personally. No, no, that's not at all what I'm saying. This understanding part is common for many, many, many problems. Yes, yes, that's true. Right. So if we understand trust, yes. then this anger business will go away. Mm -hmm. For example. Yes. But if we don't understand trust, mm -hmm. and we keep saying that, you know, before you answer, you drink a gulp of water or keep, you know, count till 20 before responding. Mm -hmm. All those things are about doing. Mm -hmm. Those will never work. So ultimately, the effort has to be made to understand trust, to understand human being, to understand relationship, to understand feeling of trust. All right. Yes. If that happens, or at least some movement is there in that direction, then that anger thing will be reduced and ultimately resolved. Oh. So we always have to go back to this understanding part. Mm -hmm. Now this understanding part is very limited. It is not unlimited. And for there are many, many, many issues which are based on, you know, lack of understanding of trust. So if there are thousand people who are, you know, expressing their problem in different, different ways, just by understanding relationship and understanding the feeling of trust, most of those problems can be resolved. Right. So we have to keep going back to that. Yeah. Okay, good. We'll take one more. Uh, Mrs. Renuka. Okay. Uh, Dr. Madhulika.
Mrs. Nisha. Hello, good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning, Nisha. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, understanding uh, our uh, body and mind. Uh, sometimes when we are in a hurry, uh, like I'd be in a confusion, what has to be done. But after listening to this uh, UHP, it has changed my perspective. Before action, I am uh, thinking for some time, like what has to be done? Uh, what will be their perception? If I react immediately, what may be the impact on the other person? Yeah, but what is your question? I'm not clear about that. Currently, in the class and when we are uh, taking class, some students, uh, they will, uh, like, uh, bondedly for attention seeking, they will be doing something, sir. Like, uh, uh, first class we may ignore, second class also they will be, like, uh, trying to disturb the class. So how we should uh, make them understand that what they have to do in that case? Yeah, that's what the earlier question was also the same kind of question. That yes, sir. Ultimately, we want uh, to be happy unless, and we want to relate. And if we don't have uh, a good way to relate, we keep doing all these kind of disturbing things. Okay. And in fact, such students have got a lot of energy. So we have the opportunity to uh, direct their energy or help them to direct their energy towards what is going to be fulfilling. We, we have to have the capacity to do that. So you have to develop your own capacity to do that. Okay, so you can work on that and meantime you can talk to them separately. All right. And you'll find that once they, once, you know, few of them switch over, start paying attention, they will motivate everybody else to do the same. Because there are hardly 10% students who make the, you know, opinion of the whole class. And there are many good examples. You know. There was a student who was saying, you know, uh, in Hindi, he was saying that, look, he was telling his teacher, he was telling other students, and his teacher is walking, wearing a kurta pyjama. So he's saying, Dekho, gawar ja hai. And the teacher heard it, saw the boy. Now, what is the kind of responsibility that the teacher has? You have to see that. to help the student or to punish the student. So like that, you know, you have to see what is my responsibility and develop the capability to fulfill my responsibility. So there will be many students who are confused and we have the opportunity to help them. And this UHV1 module is an initiation into that in higher education. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go over a few of these uh, modules just to give a flavor for that. And after you go through the presentations and after look, uh, you know, going through the recordings that are available, you will have more questions. Uh, you'll be prepared partially, and then if you have more questions, then more discussion can happen, which can be focused on your own understanding, own ability to share the contents. So there are these 15 sessions, and each of them have got something specific. The progression here is going from self to self plus body, to relationship, to the society, and up to the natural environment. So all this 
are there, but it is always connecting to students' aspirations and students' concerns or issues. So it's always connecting it to the living. It's not a set of do's and don'ts, but like you can see on the right hand side, it is understanding some basic reality which is connected to solving their issues and fulfilling their aspirations. So we'll see a couple of them. The first session is about field options. The goal is to develop a conducive teacher taught environment to help to you know, further develop that. The student should feel comfortable in your class. And if you have a small class, you can certainly, you know, make a good attempt on that. I've seen when we have a proper discussion with the students and say, how do you want me to run this class? Through rules and regulations or through relationship? So then they say that, you know, through relationship, most of them. Then you can discuss what that means, what can that mean, you have a discussion with them. But over here, there is very little time. So at least do the introductions so that they know who you are and why you are there, how uh, this content is related to their life. Any content, I mean, if, if you are teaching physics, uh, it should be connected to their life. So if they are able to see that connection, they will be interested. So that is a goal of the introductions, to develop a conducive teacher-taught environment. The activity is introduction of the faculty and the students. If you have a small class, you can do the introductions of all. If you have a large class, you can still do the introduction of the faculty. And you can do the introduction of a few students. And if you have the opportunity, you can a priori give this assignment to the students to talk to somebody else that they don't already know and introduce that student instead of introducing themselves. And some other student will introduce uh, this student. So like that, they come to know each other uh, in a more you know, detailed way. And here are some pointers uh, for the introduction, but these are just pointers for them to, it's not like a form that they have to fill. So it is something that they can use for uh, starting their introduction. And depending on how much time is available, uh, you can have the introduction of all the students. But certainly, you should give your own introduction. So if I were to give my introduction, I would say that uh, my name is Raju Lakshana. I belong to Lucknow or a place near Lucknow, but I've never stayed there. So I don't know where I belong to. Uh, in terms of my education, uh, I've done B.Tech and M.Tech from IIT Delhi. And uh, uh, right now, I am participating in this UHV activity in the country. I am on some of the AICTE committees. And uh, family background, I'll say my parents are both uh, gone. Uh, I have two brothers. My wife is a doctor. Uh, but now working on holistic health. And I have two sons. So like that, I can give, you know, and I am interested in this. I can tell you very clearly that I am interested in this activity because I found it to be very important and useful for me. And uh, other than that, 
I think that it can be useful for you. And that is my motivation to share it. Not because AICT is paying for it or something like that, you know, like that. So it is something which is, um, I can see that it is beneficial for me. That is why I am uh, sharing it with you and it might be beneficial for you also. And you can give some examples, uh, one or two examples. So it will help you to connect to the, uh, I mean, at least the students will come to know who you are, and then the students can introduce themselves. Because many times, the students that come uh, to higher education, they may not be encouraged to talk in the class or encouraged to ask questions in the class before. And they might find it very difficult to ask questions. So that opening up has to be done somewhere. And this might be a, a reasonable way to start. At the end of each session, there is a home assignment. And in the home assignment, we are asking them to write down their aspiration or aspirations, some achievements, and some concerns or issues or problems that they have, that they are trying to resolve, which they don't want. So that assignment is given, and then we can close the session from uh, in the first session. In the second session, we'll start with their whatever they have written, whatever they have uh, um, written in their book, and we will take their aspirations, achievements, concerns, whatever they have, and just note it down. You're not going to comment on it, you're simply going to note it down. The ones that are typed here uh, were the sort of example that was given in the uh, when the homework was given. And this is what they said. And this is from an actual session that was done. So these are their actual aspirations, these are their actual achievements, and these are their concerns. So in the second session, we are going to ask them to sort of categorize their present effort, why they are making that effort, what do they expect to get out of it. And again, we'll keep asking this why question one at a time. Over here, I've written it uh, as an example. but. We will keep asking them why, and ultimately they will say that they want to be happy and prosperous out of all this. They are studying so that they can become an engineer, get lots of money. But with that money, they want to have various things, but ultimately they want to be happy and prosperous. So it is, then you can ask them the questions whether. You know, this is your basic aspiration or something else to become an engineer is their basic aspiration. Or these are steps for achieving their basic aspiration. So like that, there can be a discussion about, about it. So what is the effort that they are making? Why they are making that effort? And what they want to be ultimately? What is their basic aspiration? So if they are able to see that, then you can ask them further questions like, what would be a good way to plan your life? Do whatever you're doing very well, and then hope that you will become happy and prosperous. Or do you want to start with understanding happiness, prosperity, etc.? and then plan your effort. So like that, you can ask them, you can have that discussion. 
And then you can sort of reinforce these key points that we all have aspirations, concerns. And by asking why we can arrive at our basic aspiration at some point. We can propose that the basic aspiration of every human being is continuity of happiness and prosperity. You may not need to define it right now, but you can certainly say they would have some idea that that is what they want. That the goal may be something uh, to do or something to get to something to become, but the basic aspiration is beyond that and they can see that it is happiness. There may be several steps leading to the fulfillment of the basic aspiration, several different ways rather, I should say, several different ways. So if somebody wanted to get computer science and they got uh, civil engineering or mechanical engineering like I did, uh, they won't become unhappy. They'd say, fine, you know, it's fine. This is another path. So like that, you know, I wanted this roommate, but somebody else has come uh, and so on, you know. So I didn't want this institute, I wanted some other institute. Like that, there will be many uh, possibilities to see this point. Then the other point is planning the steps can be done more effectively if that basic aspiration is clear and you start from there. And students can start doing that exploring. So this is introducing this part. So let's see if there are any related questions to this. I'm lowering all the hands now. Okay, so that any questions which are related to this, they can come. So there are uh, Dr. Anu and Mr. Krishnan. Either of you can. Dr. Anu Ragini. Yeah, if you are doing your um, uh, session with the students online, you can have these polls and while the poll is going on, you can uh, have the discussion. But let them fill the, uh, fill the poll and then ask their question. Hello, sir. Yes, Dr. Ran. Am I audible now? Yes, yes, you are Actually, right. I was unable to unmute myself. That's okay. And <laughs> that's okay. So I don't have a question here. I just would like to reflect my experience. Will that be okay? I think we can uh, focus on the questions right now so that so based we can on this topic it. only, based on the same topic of how we can interact. Yeah, with briefly, you can put it. Yeah, briefly. I'll just put it yeah. briefly. Yeah, sure. Based on my experience, like the students, especially there were a few faculties who were asking, like, how do we handle when they are not attentive and they're not involved. So what I did in my experience was I kept on insisting and I kept on emphasizing the need. It took time. Like first year, the student who were not listening to me, but the third year, he was able to respond, he was able to take it even more positively. So only thing is I would say, let's have patience. I think we can. We can. <laughs> yes, yeah. It's the only thing I experienced it, and I am able to see the differences in the students. Yes, very much true. See, if they can see that you genuinely have a concern for their well-being, that's exactly that is all that is needed. So, and more than that, the second thing which I want to say is like the more we need, we listen to them, they respond actually more than we talk to them. When exactly. we listen to them and listen to their situations, they automatically take it in a very positive way, sir. Of course, that is, like I said, if they are able to see that your interest is in their well-being, then they will take interest. So, I mean, there are many, many examples. One of them is 
that some students were found drinking and their uh, uh, college has this rule that they have to be reported to the police and in that country, it is in Bhutan, that in that country, if you are reported to the police, then they are rusticated from the college and they don't get a government job for some a number of years. So it is a very severe punishment. So now this is being discussed in the disciplinary committee. And out of all the teachers who are there in that committee, except for one person, everybody else is saying that we must follow these rules. They are the government rules and we are done. But this one faculty member is saying that if we throw out these students to the society, will it become a better place or a worse place? And number two, what is the responsibility of any educational institution? Is it to make them better human beings or just throw them back into the society? So this disciplinary committee, instead of lasting for a few minutes, it lasted for two days. And ultimately, they decided that we must try something before uh, letting them go back to the society. And this faculty member, he said that I will take care of these students. And these students stayed in the, his house for four months. And out of those four or five students who stayed in his house, two of them really changed. The others uh, still had those problems. So that effort has to be real effort. And if we are able to make some effort. I mean, you don't have to put every student in your own house, but if they are able to see that you are interested in their well-being and you are willing to make effort, then why wouldn't they not listen? It was very hard. This thing is very hard to do, but it is the right thing to do. And today where we are, we may have to do, you know, have that kind of patience that you are rightly mentioning. That yes, you have to have patience, but you have to have effort which is in the right direction, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, so we can see uh, your... Yeah. So over here, most of you are saying that your present effort <clears throat> is your basic aspiration. So you also have to find out whether that is your basic aspiration or to be happy is your basic aspiration. <laughs> So you have to find out for yourself, you know. So giving a clue as to where you are right now. So we have to work harder to see our own basic aspirations so that we'll be able to help the students also. And it is possible that you have not understood the question. But assuming that you have understood the question, the to be something, to be happy and prosperous is the expected answer. Okay. All right. So we'll go ahead. Then all these sessions are like that, you know. You start the next session with a review of their uh, assignment. So you spend time in listening to their uh, exploration, in listening to what they have done in terms of their home assignment. And if they are having any questions, you try to respond to those questions. So especially if you can do it in small groups, it will be 
uh, very enriching for both the student as well as the teacher. Okay. In the next session, we are talking about this. What is the basic aspiration and how to fulfill that aspiration? And this you have done in your initial workshop also and in the second one also. And now again, for the students, it will be similar. Except that we are not going to talk about all the details. We are simply going to introduce that for fulfilling our aspirations, physical facility is one thing, but you need these two other things, this feeling in relationship and right understanding to fulfill your aspirations. So we'll not go into details, we won't go into what is the priority and whether it is human consciousness or all that. We'll simply stick with what is required, what is your basic aspiration and what is required to fulfill those basic aspirations. And you can ask them all these questions. Particularly, should education help you in this transformation? Excuse me. So that is the role of education to enable this transformation to happen. And that is a basic goal. The skills are required to express that understanding. Isn't it? So that is the basic idea of this one. So here are some key points from this. And in our talk with the students in this particular session, we can focus on trying to convey these points very clearly with some examples. Okay. So these three things are required for the fulfillment of aspirations. And these three things may be required, or one or more of these three things may be required for the resolution of our concerns. If there are any problems, then they are due to lack of either physical facility or relationship or right understanding. So like that, we can ensure that this point goes across. That holistic development is the transformation to the state in which all three are rightly placed. So whatever the current state is, the movement to the de desired state where all these three are uh, in the right order, in the right, you can say, uh, measure those that state, uh, going to that state from wherever we are is holistic development. Some important points here, while presenting, cover the content that is mentioned rather than opening up new content. So for example, in this presentation, we are not talking about animal consciousness, human consciousness, etc. That is covered in the introductory FDP for faculty. And it is covered in UHV2 course for the students. It's not covered over here. So if this question comes up, then uh, you'd rather say that this will, while well, this will be covered later on, uh, we can explore and we may give one line answer to it so that they can explore and they can uh, try to find their own answer. Because after all, giving any answer is uh, not going to be uh, sufficient because they have to be able to see it for themselves. Like you have to see it for yourself, they also have to see it for themselves. So while responding to questions, stay with the content that has been covered rather than opening up new content that may be covered later. 
and our role is to encourage and facilitate the student to explore and find the answers within and not provide ready-made answers, particularly about doing. Okay, so we have 15 minutes remaining. Uh, let's see if there are uh, any questions. Mm. on this so let's see yeah. uh, dr ramachandran mrs renuka one of you can ask uh, yeah mrs renuka speaking Your voice is not audible. Yeah, Mr. Ramachandran. Pragati Bhagwan. Mrs. Miss Pragati Bhagwan. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Ah, yes. Actually, I just want to ask that we are going to follow these steps while we are uh, means, uh, try to inculcate such values into the students. But what is necessary or what is the required thing from the student side? What is that? Uh, means we are being as a teacher going to do these things for the students. But again, simultaneously, what are the necessary things from the student side? for these uh, students uh, may or may not be very responsible so yeah, then, it, we have to be more responsible that's all okay they have no you don't have any condition for the students okay, okay. okay so there are no conditions for this course or any education so you don't have any conditions like that. Of course, if they have that uh, student mindset, willingness to listen, willingness to explore, that is nice. But if they don't have it, we have to help them to develop it. Yeah, that's why, sir, because nowadays we are going to see that students are um, extra talented, but somewhat that ethical values or morals, are they are uh, lacking in that things. And that, yeah, that is the main problem. Uh, you would have gone through the part on society about, you know, how people copy, how the family, in the family, they copy things and then they follow things and all that. Yes, sir. So that is the core issue that, that is why it is like this. So we know why it is like this, but what do you do? You can't reject the students. I mean, particularly if the student is your own child, your own son, daughter, what will you do with them? Yeah. And they yes. are there, you know, you can see that it is in your own family also, same way, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. You can't, you don't have the option to say that I will take only these and not those. Isn't it? So okay. you have to develop your own capacity to. Uh, <clears throat> be the solution rather than expect them to, you know, give some conditions for them. this. Yes, sir. Yes. And it will be not so easy to stop with that. Yeah. But you have to go there. <clears throat> yes, sir. All right. So we'll go to the next. Uh, yeah, every session will end with this assignment, some assignment. And in there, <clears throat> in this particular uh, session, we are asking them to write down their concerns and aspirations here and find out whether what is required to fulfill it or to address their concern. Okay. So these are some examples, but they will do their own exploration and then try to find out what it is. Okay. And in the next session,
We are expecting some answer in the next session. I have written it here only. But the conclusion that uh, will come from this kind of proper exploration is these two conclusions. For the fulfillment of any aspiration or for addressing any concern, the right understanding and relationship are definitely required. There is nothing that can be achieved without these two. Physical facility may or may not be required. So this is a very important conclusion. And if you can draw this conclusion for yourself, only then you will be able to authentically share it with your students. But in the meantime, you can share it as a proposal and keep exploring it yourself. So for example, for peace of mind, there is nobody else that is uh, <clears throat> involved in this. So it purely has to do with the clarity in your own mind, your right understanding, your own feeling within you, whatever feeling you have, and nothing else. So if you have both of these things, you will be at peace. Without these two, if you keep working on the outside, more air conditioning, etc., etc., bigger car and things like that, will it reach? Will it result in peace of mind? You can find out for yourself. And if you are able to find out, then you'll be able to communicate it to your students also. The second conclusion is that in general, our effort is mostly for physical facility mostly for this physical facility part. And we think that it will solve all these things. It will fulfill my aspirations and resolve my concerns. So if we are able to see that, that other things are also required, so more effort will be put on developing the right understanding. But for the students to draw this conclusion, it may be very hard for them to do it right up front because this. But at least they should be able to grasp from this whole thing that there is a possibility of being at peace. There is a possibility of developing ourselves. And there is something like right understanding and right feeling. And these guys are going to talk about it in UHV2 also. So I will look forward to that and see what I can do about it. I'll be open to exploring that. Okay. And like that, you have uh, some issues also. We are covering over here, we have covered the aspiration. And at the individual level, we take the aspirations and concerns whatever list they made, draw out those that are at an individual level. And here are some examples of that. So they have curiosity, they want to know, uh, but some of the problems they have, negative thinking or peer pressure or things like that, they have many uh, concerns also. So if we can connect up this right understanding, with these issues or with their aspirations, then they'll be more interested in learning and understanding more. So for example, if we are able to take any of their problems and connect it up, so in this particular session, we are going to talk a little bit about human being. Only this part, this little part about human being, that human being has a need for happiness in the self and physical facilities required for the body. And it is fulfilled in this way. Happiness, the need for happiness in the self is fulfilled by right understanding and right feeling in the self. 
and the need for the body, physical facility and food and all that is fulfilled by physiochemical things. And that these needs, need for happiness cannot be fulfilled by physiochemical things. And the need for physical facility cannot be fulfilled solely by right understanding and right feeling. So like that you can start with that and then you can ask them some questions that understanding this human being, is it going to make any difference to your choices? Does it matter? And can you resolve any of your concerns uh, by having that clarity? So here's an example of what they can explore. And you can, you know, uh, then talk to them about that you can understand these things in more detail so that you can have a healthy body and a healthy self, which will be, you know, uh, more fulfilling for you. So like that, we can have, you know, specific examples where they can connect up their uh, aspiration or their concern with right understanding. So like that, there are all these <coughs> others. Uh, we have only five minutes left, so I will uh, go to the summary of this. This is going very slow. So we were at this UHV1 module and we were at this point about um, self-management, the fourth uh, lecture. So you can see that for any of these aspirations or concerns, understanding some basic reality, understanding some underlying harmony can help in achieving those aspirations or addressing those concerns. There are plenty of resources for preparing yourself. Okay. So all these things are there. Materials in terms of presentations, handouts, surveys and assignments, recordings. Material and recordings on how to share, preparing to share. The reference books and teacher's manual, all these things are available. And for you to attend these various types of activities, like higher level FDPs, you can volunteer, you can attend the weekly meetings, you can attend the weekly mentor mentee meetings uh, or, or the morning session. So all these things are available for you. And here are the links. In fact, uh, I will send it in the chat now, all these links. So you can go immediately to these and copy it and keep it somewhere. And then you can go to these sites and see that. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, and then, uh, so there are these, this is the present FDPSI website, the AICT site. So if you go to this student induction part, you have all these things. Uh, but the new FDP site will have it in much more detail and much more uh, user-friendly manner. So you can see that. There is There are two YouTube channels. Uh, on the student induction program, there is one YouTube channel. There is a UHV website, which has all this material also, presentations, etc. And then there is a YouTube channel also, in which there are many playlists. And there are playlists of recorded sessions on UHV1. In both this YouTube channel as well as the other one. So this page, I will copy and send it in the chat now. Uh, we'll have to stop here. And uh, if anybody has any remaining urgent questions, I'll still be here after the quiz is over. You can stay, but officially the session can be closed uh, for the others. So my best wishes to all of you. Thank you very much.